Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a large custom size checkbox in your Microsoft Access Forms and Reports. It can be as big as you want it to be. Today's question comes from Kayla in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, one of my Platinum members. Kayla says, is there any way to make checkboxes larger? I have a few people working for me who are elderly and are having a difficult time with these tiny default checkboxes. Well, Kayla, you're not alone. Several people have asked me this, and unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do with the default checkbox. There's a default checkbox right there. It's tiny, and yeah, I can see how if you're elderly or if you're hard of sight or, you know, you got arthritis, it's, it's kind of hard to get the mouse right on that little guy that's that's tough and if you go to design view there's not a lot you can do with this thing um let me move it over here so well, actually so let me just get rid of notes let's move it over here so we got some room to work now you can move the label away from it and you can try to resize this guy but what you do is you just resize the check area this whole area in here is where you can actually click and it will change the value of the control but it doesn't change the size of that little teeny visible box in fact, if I save this now, and if I close this and reopen it, I can click right out here, and it still works. So that might be a solution for someone who has a hard time getting the mouse over that little tiny little box. They can at least click out here. But it doesn't change the fact that it's still tiny. So how do we get around that and make a bigger box that looks like this guy? How do we do that? Well, the key is we're not going to use a checkbox at all. We're going to use its relative, a toggle button. This is a toggle button. See that? It's much, much bigger. You can make it as big as you want to. Right? See that? These are toggle buttons. They look like check boxes. A little check pops up. But they're bigger. They're easier to use. Okay? So how do we do this? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now, before we get started, I want you to go watch my intro to VBA video. If you haven't done any VBA programming at all, don't be scared. We only need a couple of lines of code put in the right spots. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. It's super easy to do. Super easy. Literally only a couple lines of code. We just got to know what they are and you got to know where to put them. So if you've never done any VBA before, go watch this about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you all the basics and then come back here and I'll show you where to put these couple lines of code. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website if you want to grab yourself a copy. You don't need to. You can use whatever database you want. This can be real simple. All right, here's my checkbox. Let's get rid of this guy. Design view, click, and goodbye. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a toggle button on here. So drop this guy down. Find the toggle button controls right there. Toggle button, drop it right there. All right, there's your toggle button. Now, save it, close it. Open it up, take a look. That's what it does. It's not very useful. All right, so we have to make it useful with a little teeny tiny bit of code and some formatting. Okay, so open up the properties for it. Double click on it. Now it's called toggle 30, first of all. We're gonna change that. Go to control source, drop this down, and we're gonna bind this guy to the is active field. That means its value is now going to be bound to the is active field in the table which is under the form. So when I change the toggle button, it changes the value of is active. And while we're at it, we're going to copy that and paste it right there to change the name of the box to is active as well. Okay, so it's named is active and it's saving its value in the is active field. Same thing with first name, right? The name of the text box is first name and it's saving its value in the first name field in the table. Okay, that's what the control source does. Now, as far as the way this thing looks, honestly, I particularly don't care for the new styles that they added in, like, Access, I think, 2007. Um, I just don't like the way they look. So I'm going to go to the Format tab here, and where it says Use Theme, I'm going to change that to No. It puts it back to a standard, old-school-looking toggle button. All right, yeah, it looks a little boring, but I like these better. I don't know. I just don't care for the rounded look, and they make them try to look all shiny, and I, this is fine. Okay. If you like the styles, the themes, sure, stay with them. I don't care. All right. Now, the thing with this is, is that it really doesn't, 
lend itself to telling you what its value is by just looking at it. Yeah, you can see it's up and down, right? There it's pressed down, there it's up. So what we have to do is we have to change the caption of what's in this toggle button based on its value. So let's go back to design view, click on this guy. Now let's put a caption in here. Just put the letter X in there for now. All right, and I'll make it bigger because the point is we want to make this large, right? So let's make it about uh, 22 point. All right, bold it, make it red, whatever you want to do. Okay, now let's go to the event tab. And we have to do something when the value of this button changes. Okay, we can put it in the on click event. Personally, I prefer after update. All right, after update happens anytime the value that this thing is bound to changes. All right, so click the dot, dot, dot button. If you're asked what kind of builder you want, pick the code builder, and then this guy pops up, right, the VBA window, and we're right here inside the is active after update subroutine. Right inside of here is where the magic happens. Okay, so in here, I want to say, okay, if this value, if this field, right, is active, if it's true, then set the caption to x let's say otherwise make it blank okay so i'm going to say if is active now you could put equals true in here but that's assumed you don't need to put that just if is active and access knows you mean if is active equals true then what do i want to put in here if it's true i'm going to say is active dot caption equals x just like that Otherwise, we use the word else, otherwise is active dot caption equals blank, an empty string, and if. All right, so when I click on this box, if is active is now true, put an X in there. Otherwise, put nothing in there. Okay, save it, control S, come back over here. Let's close the box and reopen it. Okay, ready? Click, click, see? All right, now the reason why it didn't appear to run the first time is because when the box opens, that code doesn't run. And right now, see the box is up, all right, because the value is false. But watch, if I click on it, now it's true and the X is there. The reason why is because we have to run that code also when the form opens or when you move from record to record. See, as I move from record to record, that code isn't running and the X always stays in the box. So there's one more place we have to put that code and that's in the forms on current event right there. Go to the form properties, events on current. This event runs when you move from record to record. Okay. Including when the first record loads. Now I don't want to copy this whole thing. I could copy all this code and put that up there. Instead, I'm just going to say, Hey, why don't you call this guy? So copy that and paste it in there. See the form current event is going to say, Hey, go run this code. The is active after update. It's going to come down here and run that stuff. Yeah, you can make your own subroutine. That's another way to do it too, but this is fine for now. Okay. In my full developer classes, I teach you all the proper things to do, but this works. This is good. There's nothing wrong with this. All right. Save it. Close it. Shut her down. Open it back up again. Now look, the button's down. The X is in there. And as I move from record to record, look at that. See? When we come across ones that aren't checked, the button's down. And you get the X. See? How's that? Pretty nifty, huh? Now, how about we put an actual check mark in there and not the, the letter X? Well, let's change this guy. Change this to a capital letter P. Why P? I'll tell you in a minute. And go into the code and also change this to a capital letter P. Capital P. Why are we using a capital P? Well, check this one out. All right, click on the box, go up to format, drop down your fonts. Now you should have a font, scroll way down. I want you to find Wingdings 2. Wingdings 2, this has been around since like uh, Windows 98, I think. Wingdings has been around. Click on that and look at that. This, the Wingdings 2 symbol for the capital letter P is a check mark. Isn't that neat? And if you go into uh, Microsoft Word, go into Insert Symbol, you can pull up the Wingdings font, take a look at all the different ones that are in there. There's tons of them. I'm not going to go over them now. If you guys really want to see me do a Wingdings lesson, I will. Let's change this so it's bigger. Maybe uh, 48 point. There you go. 
and make the box fit the check mark. Perfect. That looks like a nice check box, doesn't it? And if you don't want it red, that's fine. You can make it green or blue or whatever color you want. Let's go green. Let's see what green looks like. Um, that green. Oh, yeah, that's neat. Nah, let's go back to red. <laughs> All right, save it, close it, open it up. There you go. There's your big checkbox. Is that better for your elderly users? Hopefully. Now, if you want to add more checkboxes to your form, because seldom do you ever have just one, you can do that. But you got to copy all that code. You got to take this guy. You got to copy the after update event, right? You got to copy this code in the next button. You got to make sure you copy that or at least have different copies of that for each form current event. So there's a lot of code to copy. Or you can write a single global function that handles all of them on any form anywhere with one piece of code. And that is what we're going to cover in the extended cut for the members. Usually I take the... I take the, the the simple lesson and add it and make put it on steroids and that's what the extended cuts are we're gonna make one global function we're gonna call it we're gonna make it called format toggle buttons send it the name of a form and it will go through and format all the toggle buttons on that form to the standard that you set all right make the checkbox change the caption whatever you want to do see here's my sample one i showed it to you at the beginning of the video right and i don't have duplicated code everywhere for each one of these buttons okay so again, silver members and up get access to all my extended cut videos. There's lots of them now. There's like over 200 and something. And if you want to learn more about those VBA events, the after update event and the on current event, I've got uh, separate tech help videos on my website for those as well. You can learn lots with just my free videos. So go enjoy. I, I help yourselves to them. That's what they're there for. And um, I hope you learned something in this video. Check out the extended cut. Become a member today and you'll learn even more. All right, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. 
Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.